Hello everybody and welcome back. It's Chuck Thunder, or Charles Thunder, however you know me in game in Uncharted Waters Online. It's been a long time since I've been playing the game, but I figured this is a good time to step in and I've seen a lot of newbies come into the game lately on some of the groups and I wanted to do everybody a good favor and do like a top 10 video recap of the things a new player should know uh, and do immediately when starting the game. Um, you know, even despite all the videos I've made, the 70 videos that I've made or so, um, there are still a lot of questions about um, some of the more basic things because, again, this game is not easy to know at all. Um, and it's a good idea uh, to know uh, this information before going in because there's a really good possibility you'll forget what you're doing um, and go asking questions later or referring back to my videos um, or looking online for the answers, which the online for the answers can be easy to find. It can be hard to find and finding it in my videos could also be easy and hard to find, but if I figured put it in two places, you'll find it all at once. So, um, anyways, let's get started with our top 10 list of things new players need to know when starting the game and what to do first. All right. So number one is going to be go to school. And I am in Seville right now, and I'm in front of what would have been the school had you played this game 10 years ago. Um, but unfortunately, the school has no longer um, been designated to this area of the map in Se uh, Seville, or any of your major cities. Um, so unfortunately, that means this little spot here in Seville no longer is your school. Even though it says School Doe Caper, you won't be coming here for anything as far as I'm aware. And you'll be going to Sagers. Sagers is a uh, city just outside of Seville that is going to be the uh, pretty much the hub for all school things. And you definitely want to get your butt there as soon as you can. So if you are Spanish, Portuguese, or even French, getting there is it's just not so bad. Even English is not so bad. But if you're, you know, uh, some other you know, group that's farther away, say like from the Netherlands or from the uh, Venetian area, or even Ottoman, which I don't think you can start as Ottoman. You have to, you have to actively. Oops, uh, you'll have to actively be there yourself uh, by doing some of the uh, uh, special quests to become Ottoman. So that's another story. But you're going to go to Sagers. Let me take you to Sagers. Um, I'll take my ship. We're all set to go. And I'll show you where it is. So if you're from Seville, okay, Sagers is literally right here. That's why I said if you're Spanish or Portuguese, it's easy. If you are French, you gotta travel to here. And if you're English, you have to travel from down there. And if you're from Amsterdam, you have to travel from there. Um, I don't think anybody could be uh, that nationality. Um, and you can't be Genoan either, which would be nice if you could. Um, and Venetians. They have to travel a good distance to get to Sagers. So we're going to go to Sagers. So click Sagers and say, yep. Now what I'm using here is um, tow permits where it's kind of like auto sales for you. But if you don't have tow permits, that is something you can do on your own to sail there. So it's not far. Um, I'm assuming you know the basics of getting there already. So that is going to be on to you. And that's the first step we're going to do. So let's get us over there first. We are going to go to the harbor, and I'm going to show you some of the more basic things about this area that you need to know about. Sagers looks like pretty much a basic little town. It's got everything you need from a town. Shopkeeper, a market keeper, a bank, um, a... Oh, over here there's more. I'm sorry. A barkeep, a peddler, and a shipwright, and all that other stuff back there to repair your ship. And then over in this direction, you've got your... Merchant course instructor, your adventure course instructor, and your maritime course instructor. Let me go ahead and turn this down. Music seems pretty loud to me. Did I not turn it down? Oh, I turned down the wrong one. Alright, so... There we go. Now, each of these is a different kind of skill set you need to learn. In case you haven't already noticed, your character has three different levels. A adventure level, a trade level, and a battle level. Naturally, you think that if you do quests from each of these gentlemen, you will level those, and you will. You also level them doing other various activities throughout the game, such as sailing for adventure, that's a basic one, selling and buying and trading with the merchant, and then doing maritime and battle activities with um, to get your other 
skills up for that too so you don't have to do quests but it is one way to do it but in the early game the most important thing you should do is go to school and do the quest from these instructors so so you're aware each one that you'll click and you'll say take a quest and you will take appropriate quests for you that bring you to doing um different experience gains and different fame ex gains do ones in which that you think you can easily do like ones that take you to this one takes me to lisbon that's easy to naples that's a little farther archaeology skills you'll see the required skills things that you may or may not be able to complete but do the ones that you are working on and you have the skills for for each of them um and you're going to do that until you level up now not only will you be leveling up with your actual experience but you'll also be leveling up your fame fame is what triggers you getting the exams so that means doing these quests until you get the exam is going to matter you may not get the exam in your first seven things here you might need to do more quests until it shows up or you can use a quest mediation permit to kind of recycle um that uh seven or eight quests you got and get another batch you're going to do that until you get the beginner's exam then when you're done with the beginner's exam you're going to move on to the intermediate exam and so on and so forth until you get to the advanced exam there's only three exams Check my other videos if you'd like to see the walkthroughs on how to do those and which ones I recommend doing because there are different variations at each of the exams. But each one, Merit Merchant, Adventure, and Maritime have three different exams, each with obviously increasing difficulty, nothing too crazy. The hardest being, I think, personally, the Adventure course one because you need, kind of helps to have someone help you out with that. And I do explain that in one of my videos. And the Maritime one because you have to do a lot of grinding of battle to do that. This one's the easiest one to complete. But since I was a trade learner myself, I focused this first, leveled that up. That also got my adventure skill up as I went and did it. So by the time I was ready to do adventure course stuff, I was already of the right fame to get the uh, exams without having to do too many quests from adventure. And then the maritime one, of course, I had to do a bunch of quests for him in order to release those um, exams for me. So first things first, do all that before you do anything else. Um, as you're doing them, you're going to also be doing some other things that I talk about in this list. So let's move on to number two. Right, so number two is the next one on our list, and that is to do the main story. Now, you might have noticed that there'll be some NPC text popping up on your screen with some faces about some conquistadors or some uh, pirates or something about your king or your uh, leader of your nation. That is first likely would be your um, actual uh, missions for your standard event history or your um, main storyline and they come in chapters obviously the prologues chapters 1 through 30 in my case because I'm doing the um, uh, Spanish one I don't know that all of them are similar or the same but you can be doing those now they will trigger as you progress through the game you're gonna gonna be doing these adventure quests, maritime quests, and trade quests from the Sager's school. And as you're doing that, you are going to f kind of progress through the story kind of naturally up to a certain point, and it'll ask you to go to certain places um, during the process of you doing it. So uh, just as an example, um, they talk about me and my chapter beginning, pirates took a Navy officer hostage, blah, blah, blah. And also a bank so as you read through those and as you start popping up on the screen they're kind of going to like give you the idea of where to go um you could probably figure it out by reading the story or you can find a nice little quest line along for your um, nation in the uh internet somewhere um i don't know french's i don't know uh, portuguese or english i only just know spanish and so a lot of that was easily found for me um, and that usually ends up having you go back and forth between all like the Spanish ports and even some French ports to get the main storyline figured out um, and progressed. And it'll oftentimes bring you back and forth in and out of your royal castle area where you will talk to your king to get um, extra bonuses and stuff. And this is where you're going to get a large portion of your, and here we are visiting mine, Carl little Tabera is my king, I guess you can call it. This is where you're going to get the majority of your fame um, port permits and other things as you progress. And then eventually you'll come back to him to do uh, Imperial contracts and quests and other things of that nature. So definitely keep on 
uh, progressing through that as you go. It will give you bonuses, it will give you fame, and you will get your port permits as you go. So be sure to continue through that. Because um, I don't know what, I don't want to get into detail about doing it and how hard it is or anything, but it is, takes a while to do. You won't, honestly won't finish it by the time you do a lot of the other things that I suggest in this list, but just kind of constantly, constantly kind of be thinking about how can I progress it every time you come back to your major city um, or go to other ports and stuff of that nature. You might have to sail to parts of the ocean and you'll see like a little ship with a little exclamation point over its head. That'll be part of your quest line. So make sure you're doing that and you are getting yourself through that as you go through as well. All right. And number three, number three is get to London so you can go to Oxford for, for college. So Oxford is in London. And that's where I'm headed now. I'm wrapping around the corner now. London has uh, Oxford in it, which you can get to by going to the Charioteer, which we will. And the reason why I say do this one, and you're doing this all concurrently while you're going to school. Like, your quests are going to take you everywhere. So if you're going to be up in London, start school then. Um, you know, start school as soon as you qualify for it. I don't know the levels that allow you to start it, but eventually you will be asked to attend to Oxford for whatever reason in your... Uh, text box down here you should see something but once you get summoned to Oxford to go to school you're gonna to want to head there as soon as possible because you can get some severely good benefits if you start uh, achieving and graduating quote-unquote some of the um, courses in college so you have a tab for that over here I believe where is it research info so this is your your college results here so the first one's going to be your college. These ones are going to be um, also re regarding college, but just for different things. Um, so, as you can see here, I have in my slot a c college course that I am working on slowly. Um, and they have the building research where your specialty will be. Um, I'm in stage three of this particular thing. And then um, what major I'm working on, what actions get me um, uh, this bonus. Like, build up my uh, thesis, and then how much longer I have to go until I complete the thesis and all that. So, that's why we're headed up to college now, so we can do that um, as soon as possible here and show you exactly where it is, how to get to it, and what to do, um, and how to get started. So, we'll be getting in there in just a moment. Uh, three, two, one, let's get to the London. All right. So we are going to go to the town square because I believe that's where the chariot is. I could be wrong. Uh, close. It's closer to the company district. So it's back here. We're going to go to the chariot. The carriage, I should say. I think they call him the charioteer when you get to him. You'll see him because he'll be standing next to a horse. Yep. And there's his little self and his white horse. We're going to click him and we're going to say ride carriage. And this will take us to Oxford. Um, this has something to do with my stage, why my guy's holding a book and learning right now. Um, book of Wisdom has reacted. Discovery related to the legacy theme seems to be lying somewhere within there. Is there a continue your adventure and try to make a discovery here? I have tried many times before and it has not worked for me. Particularly, I don't know what it takes to find it. Could be a search skill. I don't know. I don't know if it's... Um, somewhere else that I need to be doing this who knows whatever I, I don't I'm not involved in doing too much adventure stuff in this anyway so you're here you're at Oxford you're gonna go into the entrance here and you're going to talk to where all these people are standing around him the professor and he is going to allow you to um, talk to him about research what college there is to be into so obviously we're in developmental status level four and here's all the guidances of the majors that I've done um, and things of that nature. So anyways, you're going to click on uh, research and I've, oh, I've obtained Oceanics 1 and 2 from him by just clicking that. I don't know exactly. I guess I just unlocked them as things I could do research for soon. But anyways, you're going to click him and you're going to get a list of research opportunities that you can do. I wish I wasn't in the actively doing one right now because I'd show you exactly how to take in one. But as you saw, once you find one that you want to do, maybe something surrounding your specialty, like for me it's trade, um, you're going to select the research building. It'll yours will likely be the first star building uh, right here, the research building. Um, one, two, and three stars, each one being a different um, 
tier of uh, quests that you could do. And then you're going to do different techniques and other um, majors for you to select. So here was handling techniques, um, give, doing one of these things that works on one of these skills. And then you would have had to do some sort of um, particular task in order to do it. So as you saw with me, um, where is it? So with me, my research building was the third building. I selected that first, then I chose my major. And then now I need to do profitable trades, rich trades, and Danvin trades in order to get my uh, pages up. And each of these writes in different you know, amount of pages. Why this is not in the text box, I don't know. So anyways, you can click on details here, and you can see what a profitable get-rich trade and a Nanban trade qualifies as. Profitable trade is a, a sale over 100000 Get rich one is over ten million, and a nan band trade is nan band trading. So in this case, I would have to go all the way to East Asia, and find myself um, a NPC over there to trade trade with um, some goods, and then come back. I will show you guys. We'll, we'll talk about nan band trade in other videos as I've done before. It's not really a beginner game thing to do, so we'll do that another time. But anyways, doing these things gets you credits, and you will complete your research, and then once you finish your research. You will, um, geez, that noise. Once you finish your research, you will, um, get the skill and you can assign that skill. So I will show you here. Here's all your skills call, uh, adventure, trade, battle, the ones that you have currently, your languages, which as you notice, I only have Spanish because I use body language. Pro tip. And then your college skills. So here's all the college skills that I've unlocked so far. Not many, but all the college skills so far. And you can select them and add them to your set skills. Now I have three open set skills. So I was able to put my speed one, two, and three in there that I've worked on just to make me say a little faster. But you could do bargaining aids, you could do efficient repair, you could do food efficiency rates, whatever these ones that you've unlocked by doing it. Here's like production skill rates. So these are great if you were gonna be doing a lot of production for our purposes of maybe grinding um, great successes as well as so you can get uh, your skills up. And so all things that you can work on all that have different requirements for you to do um, in order to do it, and they could change your skills out as needed. So do this while you're doing all the other things we've mentioned before, because you're going to be doing these things anyways, um, regardless. Oops. Um, and since you'll be doing these things anyways, you're going to likely finish these quests as you go. Um, and be uh, completely honest, you're, you're just going to have a lot easier time if you're doing it at the same time. So... That is going to college, and that is how to take on the researches and something you should do right away as soon as you All can. All right, number four. Um, number four is one of my personal favorites if you're a trading kind of person or you need materials because it is getting a farm. Um, in case you have seen a lot of reasons why people are around the bank here besides pulling money out, which you think would be a quick thing, is because they're doing a lot of things with their farm. So when you click the bank, you'll see all these different options here, your vault, your insurance, by the way, get insurance, receiving your items, your quarters information, your storage of quarters, and then your private farm. If you don't have a farm already, when you click it, it won't give you much options to do here. But when you are sailing around the world, there are islands um, and other locations in which are on this planet uh, that have little farms here. And here's mine down here. There are farms in other locations. Um, there's farms out in the Indian Ocean over here, like one of these little islands, I believe. Um, and other places but the one that i always go to because i just want to get one as soon as possible is ascension i think that's the name of it and it's right here uh, off the coast of africa on the west coast um and it's not terribly far um once you have a lot of this um expanded these port permits you'll be able to get down here even if you can't get to these yet you should still be able to get a farm immediately just as long as you have a ship that can sail these waters which early game you may not have one immediately um available to you but you can get there and when you get to the private farm you're going to set up a farm it's going to cost a little bit of money to set one up so go well to do that and then you can start picking out what you want to start harvesting from your uh, farm so for me once you start actually once you start you're only going to get the ability to do one um, facility at a time so you'll have little slots here and you got to pick which one you want to choose you could choose a a farm, a mine, a fishery, or a ranch, and then of them you can have different facilities in your farm, your mine, your fishery, or your uh, ranch. So in the farm you have orchards, 
more farms, herb farms, and other things of that nature. And you're gonna every day you're gonna have to come in and then develop it. Um, when you develop it, it fully becomes developed, and then you'll be able to um, start collecting from it after it develops. It takes a few times, so every day be sure to come and check your farm and upgrade your facility so your facility is being built every day until it's complete, and then it starts producing one of the crops that you've selected. So be sure to do that every day, collect, and, and also um, update your facility and change produce where needed. As you'll see here, I need to do that for my goats. And my chickens because I'm no longer out putting goats or chickens so we're going to say change produce this is something you'll have to do every so often because you reach 30 outputs and then you'll have to switch to another one like we just changed it to a poultry farm now that's going to be doing poultry farms for eggs instead of um, uh, chicken so change that up um, I also need to change the produce for this one so we're gonna do venison next we're gonna check them all to make sure that none are Exhausted. Oops, see, there's a couple there, so we're going to change these over to salt. Cost some money, so be sure to have some money to do that. I have nothing in the mine because I don't do anything with uh, mineable goods for this tune, at least I don't. And there we are, so we're back to normal. And then I'm not entirely sure what maintenance does, but I, I be sure to hit that every day whenever I can on a particular... Um, uh, facility. All right, and so doing farms is great because you get to the materials you need for your skills. And in my case, I'm a cooking build, so I do all the cooking-based things I need for my cooking uh, trading. And so I will look at what my recipes ask for. So like for me, it's the secret Caribbean cuisine, and I like to make salted fish, so I need fish and berries, and so I make sure my farms are providing that to me. All right, and so that's farms. All right, so the next on our list is going to be pick a skill or trade skill or maritime skill or adventure skill that you want to focus. So yes, so you started doing school and you're already partly the way through or even mostly the way through, but you've noticed that you like one more than the other. You like adventuring more, or you like trading more, or you really hate the battle, <clears throat> like myself. And you really would rather focus on one particular thing. Well, good, start focusing on one particular skill. One particular tree of skills if that for that matter because obviously in the trade world you have skills and skill trees and as you can see here the one that I have the most uh, investment in is my cooking skill and luxuries trading skill mostly because I want to do spice trading and hence I focused on the spice trading job so that I can do that now with that being said very important here so let's say you wanted to do skill trading I mean uh, uh, spice trading and you want to focus on the spice tree be sure to be in a job that is trade oriented partially focused around what it is you're working on so in for me spice trading makes sense so i wanted to do spice trading so i went and got myself the spice trader job and you see it here you don't have access to that right out of the gate your guild master, who you will see when you're doing your quests, and I will show you where the guild master is when we get to Seville, is going to be the person that supplies you with the jobs. You should always be in the job that you want to be in when you're doing quests for that job. So, in case you've already started watching this video and started doing this and are already ahead of the game here, you might have been doing adventure jobs or adventure quests and maritime quests while you were still a spice trader. Not a spice trader, a cooker, or a, um, a, a sewing uh, trader. If you were in one of those, or or even doing adventure stuff, you will get limited and less experience in adventure and fame for doing the quests in that particular category if you are not in that job. So I'm a spice trader right now. It makes sense for me to doing be doing spice related and cooking related skills. It would not make sense for me to do adventure or battle. Even though these skills I actively have, as you can see in my skill tree, I do have, oops, I do have skills in both battle and adventure, okay? But they are not, with these little stars, the yellow ones and the red ones or pink ones, yellow ones are favorite skills, hence that, and red ones are ex expert skills. These level faster because they cut your proficiency needed to level those skills in half if you do favored and even more so if they are expert. Okay. Oh, we got scurvy. Do we have anything to solve that? Yes, we do. Oh, geez. Um, another pro tip. Bring stuff to treat your issues as you sail around. 
especially when you're going over long distances. Anyways, so I'm a spice trader. I'm focusing on doing spice trade stuff. It wouldn't make sense for me to do maritime or adventure questing while I'm in that kind of category, which is why I should have stated before when you were in school earlier to make sure that if you're doing the maritime quests that you are in a maritime job. If you don't have the ability to become a maritime job initially, that's fine. Complete the beginner's exam because you will get a guild card specifically to change into a battle job at the guild master with that card for free. And when you do that, pick something like junior officer, which is one I would recommend. And then you could switch back and forth for just a few ducats between the different, like say for instance, you were already a cooking trainer and then you want to go back to do battle, you can just pay a few thousand ducats and you can switch between the two. And actually, I'm going to show you that right now as I get into Seville, which is uh, wrapping around the corner right now. So be sure to make sh be sure to that be in that job that you want to be focusing on for the types of quests and paths that you're doing. It wouldn't make sense for me to go all the way to China to go grab or East Asia or Southeast Asia to go grab spice if I was in a battle skill. I'm not going to be leveling up my spice trade that way. So definitely makes sense to focus on doing that. So that that's that was important. So now's the time to pick a focus if you haven't already because what you're going to be doing is as you're going through the questing that you're doing, you will also be collecting um, a lot of experience that you think will be better for you if you were focused on one particular job. So we'll show you that once we get to the Guildmaster in just a moment. We've made it back to our uh, guild sections here. So here's our Adventure Guild to the right. Over here is our Merchant Guild and our Maritime Guild. So since I'm already a merchant, at the moment, we are going to pop inside of the Maritime Guild to show you what I mean by being able to switch between jobs. Um, of course, you have to unlock the job first before you can switch back and forth between it. Um, and unlocking it required the guild permit. So if we click the Maritime Guild guy, now you'll see Acquire Skills and Forget Skills, and then you'll see Change Job. I only have the Junior Officer. That makes perfect sense because I did exactly what I told you to do before, which was to use your guild card to pick something like this. So that way you can at least be in the right kind of job, the maritime job, in order to benefit from that. Now, I'm not going to switch right now because it costs a lot of money to go back to Spice Trader. But um, you would then click what job you want to go to and then click OK, and then it will switch jobs for you. And you can switch back and forth between all three types of jobs, maritime, adventure, and merchant. Um, so long as you have the guild card to do so, like I said, you will get guild cards just for completing the beginner's exams of each of the different guilds in school. So that is important to focus on, um, at least getting the beginner exams done of each. So that way you can at least swap between them all very easily. So in the case of adventure, I believe I have at least two. Yeah. Adventure learner and helms person. I wanted helms person specifically because I wanted geography. That would be the one I would recommend because one of the adventure exams that you work on will be a geography related one and you're going to need geography level three or four, I believe. And so you're going to want to be able to be in that case. Whereas here, adventure learner, you get like virtually no favorite skills. So it's a good idea to be in that. Plus, steering is also a decent one to have early on as well. So be sure to complete the beginner exams, get your guild cards, be able to switch between the different guild cards. And after that, you can be in the right guild cards pick going forward for when you start focusing on what type of um, play you want to focus because you don't want to overload your skills with things in which you don't use. You only get so many acquired skills early on. You, as you level up every 10 or so levels, you will get another acquired skill and you're going to want to be able to use them on the things that you focus on. It would stink if I was like in this tree and I couldn't get to spice trading because I accidentally had um, you know, shipbuilding when I didn't intend to have shipbuilding on this character. So. Um, it would behoove me to focus on the things I want here. So as you see here, I have medicine trading. I went and got the skill and then forgot the sundries trading so that I can keep the medicine trading skill for this particular build. Um, I might do the same thing for die trading just to get to this one and have this one in um, a favorite skill slot. But I need to get to textile trading, which I could learn that any time. I have the prerequisite skill, which is a council level one, council level four plus one, perfectly fine. And then textile trading, I could bring up cost only one, and this one, uh, no uh, acquisition requirements, so I'll be able to get it. Um, actually, I might be able to get it right now from Zanzibar. But point is, get what you need, 
don't get what you don't need. Um, and a little tip, like I said before, is to forget all your languages and start learning body language and be sure to bring bigger foods to make your body language easier um, to use. All right. So that is your next step uh, to that one was to focus on a kind of build and stay in that build and don't deviate very much if you can help it so that you could focus on doing one particular path. All right. Next on the list is something that I kind of already touched on, which was to focus upon your trade skills that make sense for your jobs and such. So there's two reasons to do it. One, I said to do it for because when you're doing those quests, you want to get the most out of the benefit of doing the job, doing it in the one that's in your job that your title is around. So focus on spice trading skills by doing the spice trader. That is really important. Yes. And the other half of it was talking about um, doing the um, quests and such that are located around your particular job type not necessarily specific to the job itself but to the job type so trading job do focus things that are uh, on trade the reason why i kind of lumped the two together is because they kind of go hand in hand but it is a whole separate topic in itself to kind of deviate the two things apart so first half of that just as a quick recap to that and this doesn't have to be its own number on itself but i kind of think it is is to focus on doing the first and foremost most specific thing is to Focus on the spice trade if you're doing spice trading. So when you pick a skill, so early game, there's lots of things to pick early on. There's spice, there's cooking, there's you name it. Uh, focus on that skill. Do not deviate. Do not do try to do cooking and do handicrafts and jewelry trading um, or casting and cooking or sewing and cooking. Focus on one of them. It is important to focus on one because you can make the most money by focusing on that particular skill. Don't deviate from that at all. Unless you have filled all the skills that you need for it and you can start doing like assisting skills that go with it. So like a cooking, it's important to have spices and uh, alcohol sometimes because it's part of the cooking trade. It doesn't make sense for me to do cooking and then start doing mineral trading and wares trading and getting casting because nothing of the two are going to have any relation to one another. Casting makes sense to do casting and say handicrafts because sometimes you do things in which the two things go hand in hand with each other. Same thing would be a thing for like sewing and getting textiles. Um, where are they? Textiles. Yeah, so this whole trade tree right here and possibly luxuries or um, some wares, but um, art trading, no, not so much, but jewelry potentially and crafts trading. Like some of these other skills might benefit having sewing. I'm not entirely sure because I'm not familiar with those, but only focus on one particular skill if you're doing one of them. Battle, I'm not entirely versed upon. You're going to likely get a handful of things when it comes to this. Um, but don't go deviating out of the ordinary, getting a whole bunch of things all around here, unless they complement what your focus is. Same thing with kind of adventuring. You're going to need a little bit of everything, but I like to focus geography because I like to discover things around the world that are geography related. I'm not so specific to it that I won't do things that are related to ecology or biology or, um, uh, uh, you know, theology or art, or, but whatever focus one don't don't go crazy and picking up everything off of this chart if it doesn't suit your what you want to do and what your job entitles you to do so um in the maritime guild or sorry in the cooking guild just because you guys saw that i only had one of each of them um in the uh both the master maritime and two in the adventure i'm going to show you the merchant guild real quick because in the merchant guild i have multiple jobs that i could switch between now spice trading makes a lot of sense for me because i'm obviously getting spices and i want to be able to focus on spice trading but when it comes to cooking it still is also part of the trade of cooking here and it has a lot of these but it doesn't have livestock trading or food trading favored what if i wanted them to be favored what if i want to focus on those I'm going to switch to the right job specifically for that. Not just the job type, but the actual job that is specific for it. So I can go to change job. And as you'll see here, I have several other options. Here's accountant for alcohol trading, luxuries, metal trading, sewing. If I wanted to get into sewing uh, frugality, here's the foods dealer. This one has foods trading. Um, so that's good. Animal trader. This one has both foods and livestock. So that one's even better better in some ways escape is a part of that one frugality is not and so on and then 
another one specifically that I got was Steam Engineer, so that way I can grind management because that was an expert skill. So that's another skill that you might want to focus on too, but you need a specific job for it. Get the job t uh, job hole, like specific job that you need to focus on what you want to focus on. Don't just pick any old thing. Pick specifically what pathway you want to go to. You may not know that answer immediately during your time during school, but you might have an idea of what you want to do. And once you do pick something, try not to deviate because it's just going to be time lost. And then when you go and try to have to forget skills because you don't want that skill anymore, you're going to have to start from square one again. So don't go de deviating too far. So yeah, last the way that this one differs from the previous one is being in the right job type. So that way you, when you're doing quests and stuff, you're getting the maximum benefit for doing it. And I kind of touched on it, but I didn't go break into it completely about picking the specific job itself that is specific to what you want to focus on. So those two things are separate job types and job specificities for what it is that you're going to focus on with your skills. So be sure to pick something that makes sense for you, what you want to do um, and wear gear that benefits that particular thing. So in this case, I'm wearing some gear that has some benefit to that um, accounts is uh, in storage are benefited and frugality is benefited and this is benefiting my spice trading now i had gloves on that did the same thing but those broke Bo bonus my spice trading so be sure to get the right things that focus around your skill set um so you can benefit them the most and the next one on our list is to get an aid as soon as you possibly can so you've been playing you've been leveling and you have gotten your trade skill or your adventure skill or your maritime skill to level 20. Once you've reached one of these to level 20, I'll show you, not trade skill, I should say your trade levels. Once your levels have reached level 20, at minimum on one of them, then you can come get an aid from a barkeep. Um, employing aids is super important because you want to do this as soon as possible because these aids will benefit you for your build so in my case i do have aids i will show you the aids that i chose i have here i have erda or erda and chungus who am i renamed i don't remember what her name really was but she was a foods dealer and she was a spice trader hmm i wonder why i chose a foods dealer and a spice trader aid well the reason why being that i need bonuses that complement my skill focus i chose to focus on spice trading so notice she's got spice trading plus one here. She's also got breakwater, Italian, and Arabic, which is nice. I don't have to learn these languages if she's with me. Um, I have some hidden skills that she will unlock as she levels up um, and reaches level 70 in her uh, uh, storekeeper traits, which you can then assign traits as you have the person with you. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. So you get all these skills that benefit you. And then same thing with the second aid, which you get at level 40. So once your level has increased to level 40, then you will get a second aid and so on and so forth. You can get multiple aids, but you can only ever have two with you at any one given moment. One that follows you as a captain of a ship and another one that kind of acts as like a, you know, a second, um, I don't know, second mate, first mate, whatever. So my second aid in this case has cat breeding, helps protect against mice. So that stops them from eating my goods when I'm traveling over long distances and boosts my co cooking, livestock trading, and frugality. Um, and then she also has the benefit of boosting my actual cooking, which is nice as well when I switch her between the different skills. Now you might notice, why are all these highlighted and some of these are not? Well, it all depends on what job she's in, what her duty is. So right now she is a storekeeper. I could change her trait. I can give her a different trait um, and I could show you how to do that too. Um, and so same thing with her. She's a navigator and her navigator skill has these highlighted skills, which really doesn't make a lot of sense for her because I don't need breakwater and I don't need blaze and I don't need diversion. So I'm really only focusing these because I wanted to see if I could unlock these soon for her and see what they would be. But obviously they still remain behind question marks and I'm not anywhere close to getting to that skill for her. This one's already level 50, but she's not level 25 in battle. As you see, the requirements are 15, 15, 25. Well, she's 20, 37, but she's not 25 in battle. So that's going to take some focus on that. And same thing with this one. This one needs 25 adventure, and I don't have 25 adventure. So she's not really in a good slot. So let's show you how to change the role she's in. So you've already reached level 20. You've picked the trait, the trader, uh, sorry, the aid out based off of what skill they have. You can go to um, tinyurl.com slash aid info or aids info, one of those two, and you can get a list of all the information about how to pick your aids out for your use. 
So these are the ones that I've chosen for me, but she's not in a very good, um, uh, I don't know, duty. So let's go ahead and change her duty. So we go to change aid duties. Um, and Erida is a navigator right now. I'd like her to be able to help me with spice trading, right? That would be a focus, perfume trading, medicine trading. All this is done in different duties. You'll see the duty that it takes in order to do that for her. And here's a cooking task thing. If she's in, helps her, you know, automate cooking when sailing, which is nice, um, which I've never really used, but that is the thing. And then so seasoning trading and spice trading are both behind different things. So what do I want her for? Well, I'd really like her for, um, let's say, well, spice trading, right? So that's behind the paymaster. So if I select that, look at that. It highlights the skills that it's going to benefit me, which is pretty decent. Store lieutenant, which I don't think I could choose because I already have somebody who is a storekeeper. Sorry, store lieutenant, storekeeper. So since I already have someone who is a storekeeper, I can't select her as a storekeeper. Lieutenant um, gets the battle ones, which I have. It's kind of similar to the navigator ones. So you might as well just leave her a navigator because she'll give you. Uh, at least breakwater for breaks against broad sideways or surgeon which instead of uh, breakwater gets me sociability which helps me talk to people a little bit better so you you kind of pick what you want here in my case i kind of want to pay master so that way i get more spice and perfume trading skill i can have her as lookout so she can give me the venice correspondence and reconnaissance but i really don't use those things so pick one of the ones that makes sense for you go ahead and click ok and she changes to a different um duty and then Next thing to note about aides, when you have an aide, you're looking at me sailing around going, why don't I have a second ship following me? Well, it's because my aide is sailing that ship. You can only have an aide sailing a ship once they reach a trust level of 50 or above. I have an aide that's level level 80 and she's level 78. So both of these aides could be sailing with me sailing the second ship if I reach level 50 or more of trust. That is done by simply sailing with the aide in your inventory so that's why i say select the aid as soon as you leave level 20 so you can start building that tra uh, trust right away every so many days i want to say 30 days in game sailing which is 30 minutes of sailing you will get one trust and that should increase the time that it takes to get more trust over time until you get to level 50 but eventually you will get there and once you reach level 20 level 50 on trust then you can assign a ship to them Again, again, just like yourself, you can only assign ships to them that they can actually handle with their trade levels. So notice that when I have my ship information, my ship has um, some specifications as to what levels it takes. So we go to ship inventory, right? Here is my ship requirements. I need 37 adventure, 22 trade, and 10 uh, battle levels in order to use my advanced Victoria. Um, and my aide, who you see here is equipped to my frigate, my modified frigate, needs 9, 5, and 14. Now, this is a very special frigate that was made for me, uh, or given to me, so my aide can sail it at that level. It's a pretty low level. Um, but I also have others here, and I have one that has a 52 trade. Well, she wouldn't be able to sail this one because she doesn't have a level 52 trade. This one either. She couldn't sail this because she doesn't have a 44 level trade. She doesn't have um, the ability to do my cruise like clipper for the same reason. So you just got to make sure you have the right ones. A lot of times it'll be one of the ships that you can buy um, rather than the ones that are given or built or of something of that nature which you might be able to give them old ships that you got from your maritime uh, or guild or maritime quests or uh, quests or your um, schools once you graduate every exam you'll get like a reward in the reward section which I'll show you that you go to the challenge mission yeah once you go to challenge mission you'll see that you'll have all these blue, blue ones are completed ones and, re and redeemed ones but here's an obtained if i obtain this reward for having five thousand ducats in my nation's uh capital i can obtain this reward you will see the same thing for doing um uh the exam so here we are complete the voyager cavities beginner exam and the memorial exam um and so on and so forth and you'll get these different ones here and you'll also get um the starter pack at level 30 when you reach a total level 30 and these also have ships in them so pay attention to these things these starter packs will give you ships you can use the ships and then you can give them to your aides so very important to equip your aides of that lastly another thing to notice about your aid is as they level up they will these you're wondering how do i get these traits up well as you play your aid your aid will get traits that you can assign and then here i have one that needs to be distributed so since we're working on the storekeeper ones because we want to get these here um, that's a storekeeper one, that's a storekeeper one, 
we're going to go ahead and choose storekeeper because we want to get to storekeeper level 64 and 70. We're pretty close on this one on level wise, but not on the, yeah. So these are the ones we need to focus on for the storekeeper traits. So we're going to do that. Storekeeper one, one to one, one distributed, done. Boom. Okay. So that didn't do anything, but if you ever did reach the storekeeper level needed to do this, I don't need four more. It'll unlock this question mark and so on and so forth. Do I have any traits to assign here? Look, she's an S tier for storekeeper. Sweet. Don't put ones in things that you don't necessarily need them in. There's, yes, you should because it'll help make them better at these particular skills. Like this one's going to be a lot better now that she's level 97 in the storekeeper trait. But, you know, focus on unlocking everything first, I think. This one needs level 55, but I don't have level 20 on battle for her. This one needs level 30. Trade 5 and 17 should really close to unlocking that one. All I need is one more level in battle, so we're good distance away. Um, so there's really no particular thing to focus on here. So we're just going to focus on bringing up some of these other ones to a nice round number. So we're going to do lookout next. Uh, we'll go to assign traits, and we have a we have them available. So we'll go ahead and drop one into lookout, and boom, and that's it. That's all you need to know about aids right now. Yes, they can help you in battle. Yes, they can do some other things. But for the most part, for the basics for beginners, get your raid immediately as soon as you can at level 20 and at level 40. Pick ones that complement you or supplement you, things in which the skills that you don't have that you want, um, like the languages and such, and use them to your heart's desire until you can start assigning them ships because when you assign them ships, you also get their bonus of having extra cargo. So be important to get one as soon as you possibly can. Okay, another one on our list is going to be port permits. So you might have noticed that as you've played through the game, you might have earned, especially when you're doing your event quests and leveling your fame, you've gotten called to your main king or whatever it is, and you go and visit and they reward you with what they call like a port permit. You know, Northern European or Western European or Eastern European port permits. Um, and those port permits are super, super important because they allow you to visit each of these different places on the planet, not just go, go sailing to them, but actually clicking on these um, towns and being able to enter them. You won't be able to enter towns you do not have the port permit for. So if you were in Seville and you got yourself a Barca and you somehow miraculously sailed all the way to San Domingo, you wouldn't be able to get into Santo Domingo. You'd be able to restock up on your you know, goods and stuff, but you can't actually go into the city. You need port permits for that. So focus now on doing your actual port permit details. So you'll get a couple of them unlocked just for fame and other things, but there's a complete breakdown of exactly where you need to go and what you need to do to get the different port permits on the, on the internet, which I linked in one of my other videos which where I talk about how to get to each of them. So I have a whole list of videos, which I will try to link into the description of how to unlock each of the port permits. So obviously in some of the port permits, it'll be easy to get, others will be more difficult. Some will be doing quests from your um, king or whatever it is in your city. Others will be um, triggered by other events. But once you do them, you will unlock all of the port permits. So there is a specific order to doing them, but I would recommend doing all of them until you have completed the circumnavigation quest, which is the one that lets you go all the way around the world, hence being able to go to like East Asia, Southeast Asia, I should say, and then get to at least the circumnavigation part because that'll get you everywhere minus East Asia, like I'm showing here. Because just to be able to go around the whole planet is great because then you can start doing the spice trading, which is done here in like Ambon, Turnate, Run, and Dili, because this area is going to be like a large money maker for you if this is something you want to focus on. Um, I definitely wouldn't suggest going, um, skipping past this. I would do some work trying to get every single port that you possibly can um, by getting all the port permits. This also leads into my next um, thing to kind of suggest. It's not a whole separate number here, but you've been going to these different cities, these different towns, and you've been picking up all these locations and discovering them. When you get to them, you will get a discovery card. If you're doing adventuring of any kind, you're going to get discovery cards for discovering animals, locations, theology, relics, all sorts of things. Don't do anything with them yet. You can report those things in to an appropriate person to get a benefit. So let me say this. You've been sailing around doing different jobs, you know, getting different ports. 
whether you were in a trade job or an adventure job or a maritime job, doesn't really matter when you did it, but you did it. You discovered them. And when you want to hand them in, there's a way to hand in these little uh, discoveries. You will see here you have different types of discoveries in the discovery tabs that you've managed to discover, and largest being port settlements. I have 184 discovered. I don't know that's all of them, but 184 of them. Okay. They'll see if you see anything where it says unreported, which in my case they're all reported, you're going to go to a specific person on the planet in a specific city that you're going to report them to when you're in the specific job type cat or specific job category to get the added benefit of handing them in to the right person because you'll get extra bonus XP an extra fame if you are in a adventure job when you're handing in a discovery. Um, notice the little you know, discovery symbol here. I think that's going to be a big deal part of it. So you've probably collected dozens, if not hundred, maybe a hundred of these port settlements. Once you have all these discovered, you're going to go to somebody specific. I believe the person here in Seville is going to be um, Farnes or Tom Pires. I can't remember who it is. One of these two guys. You're going to go to him. He specifically likes receiving port permits. That's specific. Port permits. There are ones that like specifically receiving the other kinds of discoveries. So be sure to go to the right one to hand them in. And then when you do, you will hand your card in, you'll get a fame bonus, you'll get a skills, <clears throat> and you'll also potentially get quest mediation permits. And that's the important thing. QMPs are a big bonus because if you're going to be looking for particular quests, you're going to want them. Plus, they even sell for a decent chunk if you know somebody who wants them. But be sure to hang on to them until you're ready to hand them in. So that's why I say do all of the questing that you can that opens up all of these locations. Do all the discoveries and everything else. Don't go handing them in yet until after. You don't want to be put in a position where you're handing them into the wrong person and not getting your QMP for it and getting the maximum benefit because you can only discover these things once and only hand in the card once. So it's important that you focus on doing the actual harder thing, doing the major thing first and handing them into the direct places, you know, first. Don't go anywhere different and hand them in because you'll waste the opportunity because you only get one opportunity. So. Be sure to do that and focus on getting all your port permits unlocked. Refer to my old videos on how to do the port permit quest lines so that way you can unlock the entire world. Second to last, one of the things I want to talk about next is doing charting um, and land map uh, observations. These are kind of optional. They aren't necessary, but they are great ways to do adventure leveling as well as give you something to do um, periodically it's something you can kind of do while you're doing these other quests as well because what you're going to be doing in these regions that you go charting these certain areas of the map um you can kind of do while you're just exploring the world as a whole so the way these work is that you'll get summoned um to go see mercator in new amsterdam um so you'll go to new amsterdam you'll go to mercator and he will give you a little couple things to do where you're going to chart the north sea so the North Sea is this little section right here, right outside the uh, Amsterdam. And he's going to tell you to chart it. In order to chart it, you're going to have to do particular um, tasks in the region. So I'm going to open up my charting area. It looks like I am... Am I actively doing that one right now? I think I might be. Yeah, I think I might be working on that one right now. The Lofoten Basin, which is really far north... Um, so in order to see um, whether or not you're doing that particular region, once you're picking a region, you're going to list of things that you need to complete in that um, uh, inside that area. So you're going to go to, where do I see this? You're going to go to Map Investigations. Yep, the Lofa 10 Basin is the one that I'm working on currently. And here are your investigation entries, things that you need to do. Sail a total of 12 days in the same region and use recognition at coordinates 15758,760. So, ob first one's e obvious. Sail around in the area for 12 days. You will get acquisition rate, you know, here's your 0 to 12. You'll get 10% of your acquisition rate if you complete 12 days in it. You'll get 10% out of the completion rate. You need to get to 100%, right? 
then the red one is one that's going to be the most beneficial. So it's going to give me more percentage. Right here it is, 25% if I complete this one. Use recognition at these coordinates. So I don't know if you've noticed, but as you're sailing around, there's little coordinates in the bottom right-hand corner if you're using surveying. Those little coordinates are how you know where you are on this world. Everything is a grid pattern. And you're going to try to sail into that area. I believe this is like a um, north and uh, west uh, heading. Like, no, sorry, north and south heading. And this is a east and west heading. So we're just west, I believe, of the meridian here. Or just, sorry, just east of the meridian here. And here we are pretty far north of the equator because we're all the way up in... Um, the North Sea here, of far North Sea. So you're going to go to this area. Once you get to there, you're going to use your recognition skill if you have it, which is why I recommend at least having some skills from other tasks, other, other jobs, but not all of them. And then you're going to use the skill there and you will discover something. And then another red line of text will show up with a new location for you to sail to, to do. Now, I have no reason to be up in this direction. Okay, this is, there's no cities around in this Lafa 10 basin, but in some other areas there are, which is why I say if you're already doing a lot of the sailing around and you feel like doing these investigation entries as you're in the seas, do it. You're in a sea for a little while and you're fishing in it. One of the tasks might be catch 100 fish in a particular region. Why don't you hang around for a bit, catch some fish, okay? Things like that will help uh, boost your uh, investigation entries. And once you reach 100%, you go back to a... Arc, uh, a scholar in one of the archives or in this case it's the archives and that's kind of like going to school once you report it to the scholar in the archives it'll be marked as complete be an adventure job for that too because you'll get a benefit of doing that and then take on another region and then the way you take on regions is you go to your map you go say world map and then you select a region um, sorry uh, sorry you go here you click change and then you select which one you want. Um, blue ones are ones that I've obviously already done. So white ones are ones I haven't done yet. So got to find out where that North Greenland Sea is. So where is it? Yeah, Lafayette Basin right there. There is the Fram Strait. I'll probably do that next. Baltic Sea I've already done. These are physical landing points so these are ones that are not water they are landing there are things to do there too i don't particularly like to do these because you get caught in battles and one of the requirements probably will be to do certain battles and if you're not a battle person not really worth doing it but it might be worth doing it if you're somebody who's like a completionist and you want to do everything so something fun to do but something you can also do while you're also playing the game kind of casually and last but certainly not least one thing to never forget about this game is this is a very social game there are a lot of people in this game that are willing to help and willing to play with you so join a company go to the admin officer here and view companies and attempt to join one or find somebody who you're talking to in the game and join theirs if they have an opening because being part of a company has its own world of things that you can open up to that you can benefit from participate in and um you know get some extra bonuses out of i mean people have things to give you ships money, help, friends, activities to go do with each other, um, a whole new world, literally. You can go to your company's um, town in uh, North America over here. So look, here's my company, Compania Real. You know, that's a place I can go and get a benefit from going there. There's a lot of things there that you can buy, use, and research. There's a whole new Oxford, essentially, out here. Um, and then do that. You know, that's you know, going to be a whole fun thing to do on your own. So that's why I say it's last but certainly not least because having somebody in your company or having friends is going to make doing all the things that I've talked about up to this point so much easier because um, they can help you, tow you around, um, and make you travel to places a lot quicker. I mean, gosh darn, in the beginning, till you get the adventure Sambuk, sailing can be really painful. The sloop is okay, but the Sambuk is like a significant boost. And then sailing to like London and to Venice and to your into to Africa is going to be so much better. And doing the circumnavigation quest is going to be a lot easier when you have the um, uh, end of game or end of school uh, uh, ships because that's going to make things a lot easier. So that's it for like the beginning game level stuff. If you guys think I missed anything on the top 10 best things that you should do if you're a new player, 
um, and you want more details than what I've gone into here, I just want to do a little bit of detail, but not too much, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Hopefully, I don't know what it's going to come out to, of actual details here, here. Whereas hours of content is on my other 70 uh, videos where I talk about things way more in depth um, with a lot more detail. So go there, watch those videos. If it's something that you think you'd benefit from, please like and subscribe. Share everything that you need to share with others. I constantly am active. Even though I haven't played the game in months, I'm constantly looking at people coming in and giving them pointers whenever I can. And... Look, if you're not a newbie and you're one of my longtime watchers and you're somebody that has helped me, I appreciate you um, for everything that you guys have done for me so far. I've made it from, you know, 10 subscribers to almost 400 now simply just by this community alone. And this isn't a very large community and having the few hundred of you that have managed to come by um, and support me is really appreciated. So again, if you like my stuff, please like and subscribe as well as also pass it on to any newbies because I want to help people like this game even though for... 15 year old gamer or older it still holds up today because of the community and there's simply nothing like it out there all right guys take care it's been chuck thunder and it's been great signing out take it easy